2001 was a very historic year. Not just because it was the year of the 9-11 attack, but for Oklahoma, because since 1903, it was about to put its second, third, and fourth woman to death. Of course, you saw my last video of the first woman executed in Oklahoma, Dora Wright. But today, we're going to be talking about the famous Oklahoma Three. Wanda Jean Allen, Mary Plant, and Lois Nadine Smith. Wanda Jean Allen was born on August 17, 1959, the second of eight children. According to many sources, Wanda's life was very rough. Her upbringing consisted of an alcoholic mom living in the projects on government assistance while her father left once the last sibling was born. Growing up, she had a lot of ups and downs in life. And at age 14, Wanda was stabbed in the left temple. They say the injury will be the main cause of her future accident and impacted her ability to understand the cause and effects of her decision. But I'll leave that up to the individual to decide. At age 17, Wanda would drop out of high school. This is where the downward spiral truly began. At age 21, she began a relationship with Deidre Pettis, to which she shared an apartment with. However, the relationship soured due to jealousy, insecurity, and constant arguing. It finally came to a boil on June 29, 1981, when Wanda and Deidre got into an argument and Wanda Jean Allen shot and killed her. When she was arrested, Wanda first claimed it was an accident and she was shooting at an ex-boyfriend of Deidre's and missed. But forensic evidence showed that Wanda had pistol whipped Deidre before shooting her at point blank range. Yet despite being guilty of cold-blooded murder, the prosecutors offered her a deal. Wanda pled guilty to manslaughter and was sentenced to five years in prison to which she only served two. During that time, Wanda Jean Allen met Gloria Jean Leathers, who was also serving time for the stabbing death of a woman. When Wanda was released, she and Gloria stayed in contact until Gloria's release, where they began a relationship and moved in together. However, like the last relationship, this one was no different. During their three years together, police were called to their home multiple times to settle disputes and Wanda had made constant threats that she would kill Gloria if she ever tried to leave. Sadly though, Wanda Jean would end up keeping her word. On December 2nd, 1988, Wanda Jean Allen and Gloria Leathers got into an argument at a grocery store which ended up being the last straw and Gloria broke up with her. She then called her mother and the police, where an officer escorted Gloria to her apartment to get her thing. She also let Wanda know that she was filing a restraining order against her. This angered Wanda, because when Gloria and her mother left for the police station, Wanda followed them, where she took out her 38 revolver and shot Gloria once in the stomach. Wanda then fled the scene while police cared for Gloria, who was rushed to the hospital, but sadly died three days later. Police would eventually arrest Wanda Jean on December 6, 1988, after a family member tipped them off that she fled to Duncan, Oklahoma. She was charged with first degree murder, and since this was the second time she killed someone, they sought the ultimate punishment, the death penalty. On April 18, 1989, Wanda Jean Allen was found guilty and sentenced to death by lethal injection. She was transferred to the Oklahoma State Penitentiary where she spent the next 12 years on death row. During that time, she had become a born-again Christian and renounced her lesbianhood. But after exhausting all her appeals and was denied clemency, Wanda Jean was executed on January 11, 2001 becoming the first or second, depending on how you look at it, woman, 
to be executed in Oklahoma. Marilyn K. Plants was born Marilyn K. Sellers on October 19, 1960. Little is known about her childhood other than she was a quiet child. When she was 16, she dropped out of high school where at the time she met and married 22-year-old James Earl Plants, better known as Jim. During their 12 years of marriage, the two had two children, Trina and Chris. Jim worked nights at the Daily Oklahoman while Marilyn was a stay-at-home mom. On the outside, they were described as the perfect marriage because they were never seen arguing nor fighting. However, behind the scenes, things were anything but perfect, especially on Maryland's side. For somewhere down the road, Maryland began a steamy affair with 18-year-old Cliff Bryson, where over time, the two fell in love and made plans to be together. There was one problem though. Marilyn was a dropout who had never held a job and Cliff Bryson was unemployed with an already criminal record for petty theft crime. So neither one was financially stable for such a life together. But that didn't deter Marilyn from her plan. Knowing that Jim had life insurance policies that added up to $300,000, Marilyn came up with a plan to murder her husband. After other plans failed, on August 26, 1988, she had Cliff Bryson and another friend of Cliff's, Clinton McKimble, hide out at her house armed with baseball bats that she had given them. When Jim Plants came home after his work shift, the two attacked him from behind where they beat him mercilessly while Marilyn stayed in the other room until it was over. When it was, she came out to observe the aftermath, for which she told the two guys, that don't look like no accident. So she instructed the two to take him somewhere and burn his body. So Cliff and Clinton drove Jim to an abandoned area, doused Jim in a truck with gasoline, and set it up to where it looked like an accident where his truck caught on fire. When Jim's body was discovered, Police automatically suspected foul play, and after a three-day investigation where they found evidence in Marilyn and Jim's home, plus Jim's autopsy showed signs of blunt force trauma, Marilyn Plants was arrested. Cliff Bryson and Clinton McKimble were arrested the next day after Marilyn blamed them for the crime. But it wouldn't be until they interrogated Clinton that they would get the full story making Marilyn Plants the mastermind. All during this time, Jim Plants' family were in denial that Marilyn was involved in such a plot. But after seeing and hearing the evidence during her trial, <laughs> that denial went straight out the window. Marilyn Plants and Clifford Bryson were both tried jointly for first-degree murder. Well, on March 31, 1989, they were both found guilty and sentenced to death by lethal injection. Clint McKimble was sentenced to life in prison where he remains to this day. Cliff Bryson was executed on June 15, 2000 and Marilyn Plants would follow him on May 1st, 2001. Lois Nadine Smith was born on September 12, 1940. She had a humble upbringing where she was a preacher's daughter and was raised very religiously. But as soon as she grew up, Lois Nadine was anything but holy. Earning the nickname Mean Nadine, Lois had a bad reputation that involved partying, drugs, alcohol, and altercations. This attitude and reputation stayed with her up till 1982, where on July 4th, she, her 18-year-old son Greg, 
and Greg's new girlfriend, Teresa Baker, went to a motel where Greg's recent ex, Cindy Bailey, was staying. Supposedly, Cindy was going to rat Greg and Lois out for illegal drugs, so they coaxed her to come into it with them in a party. But instead, the group had other plans. Once they convinced Cindy Bailey to go with them, Lois Nadine Smith then began to choke and threaten Cindy with a knife. They went to Gaines, Oklahoma, where they took her to the house of Jim Smith, Lois's ex-husband, where an out-of-control Lois, under the heavy influence of drugs and alcohol, held Cindy Bailey hostage at gunpoint. In the end, Lois would end up shooting Cindy Bailey five times in the chest, two times in the head, and once in the back. It was also stated that once she told her son to reload the gun, Lois repeatedly stomped on Cindy's neck. After murdering Cindy, they put the gun in her hand and fled the scene to try to set up Lois's ex-husband at the fall guy. That plan backfired when they were apprehended in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. Teresha Baker cracked and told everything. Lois Nadine Smith and her son Greg were arrested and charged with first-degree murder. During her trial, Lois and her son kept their denial. And this time, they had put all the blame on Teresa now. However, evidence pointed everything at Lois Nadine Smith including a note that she had mailed to her son Greg, basically coaching him what to say and blame everything on Teresa. But just like the first plan, it didn't work. On December 29, 1982, Lois Nadine Smith was convicted of first-degree murder. Her punishment? The death penalty. Greg Smith is currently serving life in prison for his role in the murder. And on December 4th, 2001, at the age of 61, Lois Nadine Smith was executed by lethal injection.